Well, it's now time to review headlines on today's newspapers. And we'll begin with this day. Newspaper of records. <laughs> right, I know why you're laughing, uh, um, Shay, Tom. They don't get too upset with yes. me. But I have a bit of breaking news that is sad. And I thought I'd share it with sure. you. Yeah, I'm sad to report that veteran Nollywood actor Femi Ogorumbi, popularly known as yes, Papa Jasko, has died. Yes, and I just Pastor. thought we should acknowledge yes. that here before we dive Very into sad. the newspapers. Very sad. Um, an it icon, so obviously. Um, you know, with a long history of making people laugh, yeah. exactly. And, you know, laughter yeah, is the best gift, yes. in my view, that um, you can give people. So he will be missed, Definitely. and you will remember him. Always. Thanks for sharing, Thank you. Yes. 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 Thanks Thank you. for sharing. Uh, All right, so the lead story there on this day newspaper, article, APC synonymous with poverty and insecurity. Peter Obi says, Nigeria safe in stingy man's hands. You know, I think that he has been consistent with that. Um, yeah. <laughs> Obi, no, they give shishi um, <laughs> hashtag, right? All right. Um, and then another story there. G5 governors will soon shut the door of reconciliation. Wike wants the PDP. Kwan Kwan So pledges to prioritize education and job creation if elected president. Now, uh, the presidential candidate, um, Atiku Abubakar, um, you know, has talked about the uh, APC being synonymous with uh, poverty, unemployment, insecurity, lack of development, and other negative indices in human development. I believe that he said this um, in Kogi uh, yesterday as well. There's a picture story there. President Mohamed Buhari and Oshun State Governor Senator Ademola Adeleke. Um, this was a thank you visit that uh, the senator um, did at the presidential uh, villa in Abuja. Yesterday. He looks very happy. Yeah, he yes. looks very happy. He's happy. Big massive <laughs> smile on his he, face. He was thanking the president for signing the electoral act that paved the way for his victory. Uh, he does look very happy there. Uh, both the mass head there. Tinubu vows to work with military to defeat any threat against. Nigeria. And then another story uh, below the masthead. Bowing to court orders, INEC releases updated list of governorship National Assembly candidates. APC, PDP, LP, and NPP, SDP make the list. That This is following the court orders and the deaths of some candidates for the forthcoming uh, general election. INEC released that updated list. And um, Another story there, I believe this is all the stories that we have there. UN warns of acute malnutrition in Nigeria and 14 other countries. I guess we can read more on that on page 12. Tadaria, any topics there? Um, well, well, obviously, um, the politics continue, you know, um, to be um, as expected, you know, mm -hmm. with every candidate trying to land blows on sort of their op opponents. And um, I, I think it, w it, w it would be good if, so I, 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 I have, I've seen a few rallies and rallies seem to be sort of the preferred way of campaigning across all political parties. And if you look at the rallies of all the parties, huge numbers coming out. I am not convinced that rallies though, represent yes. how Nigerians need to be able to engage with their, um, you know, with their the candidates, candidates. So because cool. rallies are just rowdy and noisy and you don't get to hear anything. So I'd like to sort of see more media engagement, including one-on-one -on -one engagement in they, they, debates, <laughs> town halls, yeah. where they meetings, take questions, exactly. that sort of thing, because then you can sort of begin to interrogate some of these claims, you know. Um, uh, you know, um, yes, you know, ask APC to defend their records and sort of all the accusations against them, but also interrogate those that are saying, we're going to do it better. How are you going to do it better? What is it about your prudence in management that you think would translate to good governance for Nigeria? You know, what is it about the PDP that was in power for 16 years, left, and so what are the lessons they've learned that means if you now elect them and they come back into office, they're going to do things differently. You can't interrogate these things at rallies, you know? I, I would like to see more of that one-on-one -on -one engagement, you know, as um, we, we go closer to the elections. Mm -hmm. right, then. then you know the story of um, Wike, Governor Wike as well. Remember he talked about the fact that come January, you would 
know my preferred presidential mm. uh, candidate. Mm. Now he is saying that they will soon shut the door of reconciliation. Do you not think that the door has been shut a lot? We, ago, we had so this I conversation <laughs> yesterday. I, I think they are um, about to lose their relevance. My view is that they're dragging it on for so as long much as they can. that by the time they make a decision, it will not have much of an impact and in fact may come back to haunt them for those who are actually running for office. I think the governor of Enugu might be running for a Senate seat. And I, I was thinking about you know what it takes to be able to sort of tell your your viewer, um, your audience, your voters, okay, for this presidential election, vote this way, but on the same day that I'm contesting for a seat on a ballot paper of a vote particular a party, um, don't vote for the party at the presidency, but vote for it at the Senate. I think it's a recipe for disaster, disaster. We'll just you know, um, and it will, yeah, it will have a, an impact on them. I, I think they need to make up their minds quickly shut down the rumors. If they are going to do a siwaju, they should just have the courage of their conviction and come out and say it. Because I think, based on what we've seen so far, um, Waziri does not seem minded to bow down to their demand for um, Ayo yes. Iochi to actually leave office. It doesn't look like it's going to happen. So they have to then decide, like they said, whether this is a deal breaker. And if it is, just get on with it already, you know? Right. <laughs> Still on this day, we'll take yes, a look at. Yes. Oh uh, no, no, you're going to do the style. You oh, love yeah. this day style. Ooh, this day style. I'm, I'm always, I'm always here for you. You know, yes. I'm here. But I, I love, uh, you know, the entertainment. And we're seeing Sam Adegoke, um, Niger boy in Hol in Hollywood. Um, and we can see even what he's wearing. He's representing the Nigerian colors. Um, Sam Adegoke has been doing a lot of work, especially in Hollywood. He's popularly known for his uh, most recent movie. This is not a war a story. Um, that came out in 2021. He's also been in Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Criminal Minds, NCIS, you know, you name it. And he's mm. definitely uh, flying the Nigerian uh, flag uh, very highly. And I'm glad that he's been doing, I think he, he's been doing a lot of media rounds because I have seen, um, seeing him now on the This Day Style cover. I've also seen a bit of, uh, um, you know, publicity that he's done. Um, definitely, uh, I think he's he's on to great things, and I'm yes. very very. And you know, you know us now. I rise here. We're very particular about our fashion, so yes. I'm looking at what he's he's wearing here. On um, you need to grab this 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 day style page 14, and uh, you know that ode to Asho K. Okay, uh, it's just uh, it's ode to Asho K. You're it's such perfect. a fashionist. <laughs> <laughs> ode to Asho K. Right, it does right. appear that he is also wearing Asho K on the cover right there. I mean, he looks right. amazing. Yes, Have you seen this picture? Like, he's, he's, he's like very I mean, if you're probably in a movie. Yeah, I, I he, is this a skirt? It is, isn't it? It's it's a skirt. It's I think a skirt. It's, it's a mixture of the skirt and the traditional wrapper exactly. that we tied. A, a, done a, it, a yeah, skirt. done really well. <laughs> <laughs> but what I love about this, I'm sure you're wondering what we're talking about. If you want to know, you need to grab a copy of This Day and just flip to the middle, and you see um, This Day style on there. Um, so um, many relevant stories in the entertainment and style industry. I must oh. say, though, um, um, he represents, um, I think, sort of the good and the great of what is going on among our young people in sort of the creative sector. Oh. Um, um, I always say I wish our politicians would be half as good as the way that sector is sort of developing. They're making us proud. Yes. I sometimes sit and think without them, can you imagine what life would be here? We'd be just so depressed because everything else doesn't seem to be working. But they are soaring. Yes. They are flying, whether it's acting, whether it's music, whether it's the arts, as in visual arts. Yes. They're just out there dominating the world. Um, I, I was um, at, at, with my kids over Christmas um, and New Year I had to cook lunch because all of their Oyubo friends <laughs> are sort of now into everything Nigerian, everything. including food. So I was getting orders. I want jollof. I want this. <laughs> I want that, you know? And part of it is the work that our creative sector is doing, just projecting Nigeria internationally in really positive light. So this is amazing. Yeah, this is. yeah I think people, I'm going to buy. Definitely. I need to read this. Yeah, you know, it looks we need amazing. To, of, yeah. of course, give kudos to, you know, um, news and media organizations such as This Day that continue to support um, yeah. the young talent in the creative industry. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. All right, then. Right. Should Oji? we go over to uh, the Sunday Tribune? Yes. Let's Sunday Tribune. The lead story there. Saludo to the federal government. I'll stand surety for Namdi Kano. Yes. Calls for unconditional release of the IPOB leader. Saludo made this call on Saturday during the APGA, uh, the campaign kickoff on Saturday in Oka. He talked about the fact that they, uh, you know, 
The Southeast needs Namdekano in roundtable conversations to discuss the insecurity in the Southeast. And that uh, he's talked about ending insecurity mm -hmm. and that, um, you know, he'll stand uh, surety. He also mm -hmm. promised to cater for Namdekano and also offered to bring him to the authorities anytime. Yes. I, I mean, I understand why it is important to try and get um, um, as much peace as possible within mm -hmm. the Southeast, because if you don't, it will be difficult to run elections, a bit like, you know, we've seen in other parts of Nigeria. So this call by Soludo for me is not surprising, and I'm not sure the federal government should necessarily dismiss it, but I'm not quite sure that Namdi retains control of the streets mm. the way that we would like to think he does. In his absence, you know, a vacuum was created. Um, that young man sitting in Finland, Sam Ekpa, who sort of been um, uh, sending out instructions to IPOP members on the street in, in, in terms of the Monday sit at home and all of that seems to be fully, you know, in charge, particularly of the sort of more violent elements within that party. And I just wonder whether releasing Namdi Kanu will have the sort of impact that we think it will have. Having said that, I do think it is not something that should be dismissed. It should be considered. And even if it's a reduction we get as a result of that, that release, um, um, then it will be worth your while. But you mustn't forget that he has jumped bail before, on the other hand. Well, that's so why you can he's saying that he stand surety, I guess. I mean, he's, he's people, pe people stood surety for him well, before, including in a sitting senator. Okay. I went to see him in the... in the. I interviewed Namdi Kanu in Abia between the time that um, he, he sort of was released before he jumped bail. And at, at that interview that I had with him, um, um, one of the things he kept saying was that he wasn't interested in violence at that time and that he wanted to be able to persuade um, um, the federal government to do a referendum because he felt that was the way to give the Southeast, you know, um, its, its ability to decide what it wants to do. And I personally do not see anything wrong with a referendum. The problem we have is not constitutional. So if you wanted to go down that route, you have to get the National Assembly to actually to change the laws yeah, so sure. that that yeah. can happen. And I think that should be part of the things that National Assembly members from that region should do. Because it is a legitimate way of measuring whether a people, and, and because I think you know the right to self-determination is sacrosanct. Right? Yeah. Um, I, I believe in Nigeria, but people who say they don't must not be forced to stay in it. So if you do a, a referendum and they win, then it's a very legitimate, easier way to sort of separate without bloodshed. But if they lose, then what happens is they have to shut up. They can no longer legitimately be claiming to be speaking for the majority of people if people vote against it. So I think with this new government coming in, I would think that part of what needs to happen is people who are running for National Assembly within the Southeast, if I was in the Southeast, I'd be demanding that they make a commitment that once they go to the National Assembly, they'll be pursuing the possibility of an, of amendment, an amendment that so allows for a referendum. Yeah, well said, Kadaria. Other stories there. There's a picture story of Atiku's rally in Kogi State. Uh, Atiku promised to complete the Ajaokuta still complex maritime port as hundreds of APC members defect, defect to PDP. Another story, G5 governors doing more harm to selves than Atiku. That's Odin Nakalu says that. Odin Kalu says that. He agrees with me. Yes. Then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why I have been silent on G5 crisis, says Aminu Tambowal. Wow. Another story there, which is quite tragic, a tragic weekend. Lagos, Ibadan, Aba Road crashes, claim 18 people. Really sad. Many die, others injured as truck conveying PDP supporters. Clashes in Plato. Fire raises Kano police station. I saw that yesterday. Shops at Ibadan Auto Parts Market. More on that on page 4, 8, and 29. All right, then let's move on to the Sunday Vanguard. Um, I mean, we, we, the, the uh, headline story there, of course, uncertainty over Atiku Amin's weak is fresh. 
uh, threats. We kind of have already touched on that. But just on the top over, uh, uh, over the signage there reads, Raging COVID in China. Nigeria waits as 21 nations take proactive uh, uh, measures. More, more on that on page five. And I mean, I just, because of all the back and forth that, you know, that, with when it comes to this particular you know, strain COVID, we know how it shut down the world in in 2020, and um, the fact that uh, it's been said that they are possibly throwing infected wastewater arriving with planes into uh, you know the airport bush. The uh, a virology professor has come out to say that you know they're setting uh, proactive measures that need to be taken. It's right there on uh, page five of uh, the Sunday Vanguard, and you know. Please, where are they throwing the? <laughs> they're trying they're trying infected Where? wastewater in arriving China? in planes no no no, no. no arriving no. in place in nigeria oh my God. in nigeria exactly so, we're not so, oh my so it's something that we, we we kind of need to start talking about now because it was because of Tomori this has been yeah you yeah, know quite yeah. an advocate of this mm, professor tomori has yeah. been very vocal yeah, she, about yeah. our refusal to basically do basic yeah. things and I, and i think you know, what is um, tragic about Nigeria is that our dysfunction seems to be extending to literally every part of our lives, yeah. including our ability to sort of protect ourselves. I understand that COVID did not have, on a sort of medical level, did not have the sort of impact, impact. we thought it would have on us. So we didn't get as infected, people didn't die. But some would argue that the impact um, of it on our economy, on the logistics, on everything else that, you know, is also important, um, is significant enough that we should be paying attention if we're saying, for mm -hmm. example, that there's a likelihood of a new pandemic, right? So um, outside the warnings of people like Tomori who basically say, look, if you keep dismissing these things, you may end up with something bigger than you can yes. handle from a sort of health perspective. But what about some of the other issues, for example, particularly we are so vulnerable right now. Our economy is in trouble. We don't have, we've not built in any resilience. And yet nobody is talking about, okay, if we end up with another lockdown, if China, you know, decides it's not exporting anything anymore like they did, including medicine, or India as well, you know? Or if they decide that, um, you know, we are, they are going to lock down as well the way, you know, they did the last time. What have we put in place, you know, to sort of counter that? I'm not hearing any of that conversation. It's almost as if, you know, there's nothing except politics right now in this country. Well, one of the things that she, uh, that has been suggested is that you know um, uh, that other countries are doing is taking uh, tests of the wastewater that arrives with these airplanes. But um, you know, even though she has given that suggestion, she, what she, uh, her point? Uh, his the, point. Sorry, sorry. His point is that. <laughs> As it stands in Nigeria, that's not what's being done. It's just been that waste is just being taken and just being thrown on the side of you know in the bush in the airport, and that in itself could be another you know could lead to some other kind of yeah. um, epidemic. Um, but uh, that's that on that particular story. Still on um, the Sunday Vanguard, it reads there: decades after oil spills, Niger Delta raises the alarm over slow. Cleanups. It says in the last 10 years, there have been 9.828 episodes on, um, documented, according to the government spill detection agency. More on that on uh, page 26. And you can even see a breakdown of how the numbers have increased from, the, um, from 2011 all the way down to um, 2021. I don't know if any of you has actually visited areas of the Niger Delta, uh, places, places like Boni, um, I've with, seen a lot of visuals. Yeah, it's, not it's pretty awful, physical, right? Have you? Yes, and it's pretty bad. Um, the, 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 the people whose lives have basically become um, devastated yes. as a result of just being um, in this part of the country that has, for the last 60 years, provided the bulk of the wealth for our wow. government, right? So you, you get babies being born with weird things happening. Um, if you wash your clothes in places like Bonia and put them out, within a short period of time, you see the suit. And so if you translate that into suits in our oh lungs, right? Um, oh the fishing is gone. Um, the farming is gone. 
Um, and you know what makes it hard to sort of sit down and have this conversation is that we don't seem to have learned anything. So it's one thing for you in the sort of 50s and 60s, maybe even early 70s, when you were sort of new to oil exploration to make these mistakes and devastate an environment because remedial action is next to impossible, too expensive, but to then continue to do it, right? Mm -hmm. And now I'm beginning to worry because Northwest has now, sorry, Northeast, they found you know, oil in Bauchi. And I'm not hearing anything being said regarding how you're going to protect the people of that place from repeating, you know, same the mistakes, damage, yeah. the same mistakes that, were, that was done to the people of the Niger Delta. I have great sympathy for the people of the Niger Delta. I have great sympathy for when they've sort of come out to, to talk about what Nigeria has done to them and the, the fact that they deserve better. But it is also true that some of these things are only possible with the collusion. Yes. of their leaders. Yes. So there are local people that must also take some responsibility yes. because when attempts have been made to try and mitigate some of these things, I know stories of um, local leaders when given the opportunity between sort of doing something for the community and doing something for them, they always yes. chose yes. themselves. Yes. That has always been the story yes. and it is so heartbreaking, especially the health crisis that yes. comes with this um, birth support. defects. The whole thing. Yeah, really, yeah. really bad. I don't think we have much time, so we'll just quickly well, go on. Do you want to take this uh, um, tips on the Telegraph, or should I take the punch? You go and take the punch. Okay. Let me just take a look while you're doing that. All right. The lead story on the punch polls. DHQ to deploy troops in Kaduna, Imo, Borno, others. Over 40 communities, three local government areas facing crisis, says Sokoto lawmakers. Four killed as gunmen attack cop spokesman in Imo State, uh, there's a residence of a CUPP uh, spokesman that uh, gunmen have attacked. This insecurity in the southeast is really um, something that the security agencies have to tackle. There's another story on the punch which is quite, you know, devastating for me. I did see these images. I got, you know, I get all these pictures from for what's trending. Lagos parents arrest arrested for brutalizing children. If you see the pictures of these yes, young children. I think I did children. see it did yesterday. Because a two-year-old and a five-year-old. A five-year-old. Five yes. you, you will never believe that these are parents. I, these these, these are their have, parents. Yes. Their parents. Their parents. I mean, I, if, if, if I could show these images, I would. But it is so horrific. I, I Those think kids that look like, be, some, like yeah. you know, they had been in, you know, undergone some kind of torture and yes. healed and you know yes. like it has been Continuous, repeat continuously continuous yes. torture on these mm. young children um do we need to wrap it up okay um what else do we have here well just you quickly yeah the nation um this is interesting for me um don't vote along religious line christian leaders tell um the people of southern kaduna um, unfortunately, I think that cat is out of the bag already. <laughs> um, this is sort of <laughs> coming a little bit too late in the day. We've seen sort of campaigns in churches. We've heard malams, you know, um, send out tapes regarding um, voting for non-Muslims and, and all of that. And I think it's a tragedy that in 2023, Nigeria is in a situation where things like ethnicity and um, religion continue to be a factor in how we vote and not competence. But we will continue to shout, Absolutely. you know, and, um, and ask people not to do that. Um, but there are realities on the ground that we have to deal with before that can become a reality as far as the average man is concerned. So this was a great Sunday. You guys. <laughs> yes, it was. Yes, it well, was. all right.